Welcome to another lesson on modality in language. So just a reminder, we're not talking about modality in visual literacy, we're talking about modality in language, in the words that we use. And when we're talking about modality in language, we're talking about the degree of certainty, how certain we are about the possibility of something happening, or how strong an obligation is for us to do something, or for the person we're talking about to do something. So it's about those degrees of certainty. It is not about whether something is in itself likely or unlikely. And to try and give you a really clear picture of this, we're going to look at this scenario here. So our topic is Annabelle cleaning her room. And I've, written, I've got two lines here because one of them is to show the degrees of certainty in a positive way. And then the other is to show the degrees of certainty in a negative way to show that you can have high modal verbs that are either positive or negative. Okay, so over here I've got all these different um, phrases to describe uh, the topic of Annabelle cleaning her room. And what we're going to do is plot these onto these two lines to try and give you an idea. Now, some of them get a bit tricky and there are no sort of right or wrong answers. You can argue about some in the middle. But let's at least start by trying to find the highest modal verbs. Okay, so we want the highest certainty on the topic of Annabel cleaning her room. So the highest certainty you would think would have to be she will. She will clean her room. Okay, so let's put that right at the top. It's positive. We're saying she will. So we're going to put she will right at the top here. She won't, which is here, is also high modal, high certainty, even though it's negative. So we're saying she won't, but we're quite sure about it. She won't. So it goes on the negative, but still up the top of the scale near high because it is a high degree of certainty. At the other end of the scale, we want those modal verbs that describe with less certainty whether she is going to clean her room or not. So we are looking for words like she might. Now she might has that sort of um, uncertainty in it. We don't know, she might or she might not. So you can see that she might and she might not are both low, oh, we should have low written here, are both low modality. So let's put them down here. We've got she might, low modality but on the positive side of things she might or she might not on the negative side of things but still just as low in terms of our certainty about it so low modality so she might and she might not we've got them uh, up there okay now let's go back up the top here so we want to be um, have strong language certainty now the other way that you can use modality to show, is to show obligation, and that means when you have to do something. So this one here, she should, is actually quite high modal, ver quite high in its modality, sorry, uh, showing that she has an obligation to. She really should clean her room. So we can put that one up quite high as well. Let's put it up here. She should. That's not necessarily saying that she will, so, uh, but it's saying that she should. Okay, let's tick that one off. And then we end up with um, the ones remaining. And in terms of the higher end of the scale, we've got ones like she probably will. So if we had possibly will, that would be lower. But probably will means in all probability, she will. So she probably will could, could go here. I guess you could argue it could go down there as well. Because the thing is, these are talking about slightly different things, when we say she will or she probably will, it's, our, it's how certain we are that it will happen. When we say she should, it's how strong the obligation is. Enough to say they're all high, so they go up there. She probably will, but probably will is not as high as she will. And over here, we'd have she probably won't. as on the higher end of the scale, but not as high as she won't. So we've got she probably won't and she probably will. Okay, we've got left, she must. Now she must shows a stronger obligation than she should. 
and it actually um, is probably the strongest apart from she will. So even though I'm getting crowded up the top here, we'll put she must here. It really needs to probably be right near the top up there. She must. It's a strong modal verb. It is showing a high degree of obligation. She must. Stronger than she should, so higher up the scale. And then we've just got these three left. She could, she can, and she may. And you could argue about these ones, but let's say that we will put she may about here. She may clean her room, or she may not. Um, let's say she can, a little higher. Uh, it's suggesting, look, she can clean her room, as in she's, she's, it's possible, she's able to, and it's, it's sort of um, a higher modal than she might, so we'll put she can here. And lastly, we've done she can, we've done she may, and she could. Well, she could is probably lower than she may and she can. She could clean her room. It's carrying with it the suggestion that, well, she could, but, you know, it may not happen. So let's put she could here. Okay, now, as I said, there's no hard and fast rules. Uh, to some degree, it's, it's up to you how, how you would scale these. Uh, but as long as you recognise that there are some clear low modality ways of describing things like she might or she might not, either in the negative or the positive, and there are some clear ways of describing them with a lot of certainty, so they're high modality, like she will or she must, in the, in the positive way, or another high mod modality way but in the negative with something like she won't. As long as you understand that it's all about the degrees of certainty or obligation, then you understand modality in language.